Older Brother, Younger Brother, a Korean folktale. Retold by Nina Jaff. Illustrations by Wen Hei Ma. Long ago, when Korea was ruled by great kings, two brothers lived with their elderly father in a house on a mountainside near the banks of a flowing river. Even as young children, the two boys were as different as day and night. Nobu, the older, liked to pull the wings off butterflies and trample the vegetables in the neighbor's garden. He always ate up everything at the table before anyone else could and would laugh at those who were poor and hungry. Hongbu, the younger brother, cared for even the smallest creatures. When he walked in the garden, he would watch the ground to make sure that the caterpillars and beetles were unharmed as he passed by. If he saw a hungry child by the roadside, he would run to the kitchen to fetch a bowl of rice or soup to share. Hongbu knew, too, that he must respect his father and older brother. When a neighbor scolded him for something Nobu had done, he didn't complain out loud. It is better that I take the blame, he would say to himself, rather than bring dishonor on my father and older brother. Year after year, the harvest festivals came and went. Spring rains fell, and in summer, the warm sun shone down on the house by the river. The two boys grew up, each in his own way. When they became young men, they married the wives chosen for them by the elder members of the family. Soon, Hongbu and Nobu had children of their own, and they all lived together with their father and grandfather under the same roof. While Hongbu and his wife worked hard at the chores that they had to be done, Nobu sat twiddling his thumbs and scowling. He was waiting impatiently till the day when the house and everything in it would belong to him and him alone. Nobu's wife stayed indoors all day, fanning herself as the children played. One year, at the beginning of the fall harvest, their aged father died. He was buried nearby in the village cemetery. The family wept at his graveside. After the funeral and days of mourning were over, Nobu called his brother into the courtyard. As you know, my dear younger brother, our father left this house and everything in it to me, for I am the oldest. I'm tired of having you and your family around, eating up all our food and crowding into every room in the house. Be off with you, he said spitefully, and don't bother to come back. Hongbu nodded. It shall be as you wish, my brother. And that very afternoon, he and his wife and three children set off down the mountainside with nothing but a few belongings on their backs to find a new home. They walked for miles up and down the steep hillsides and rocky paths. The wind blew in their faces and the dry leaves crackled under their weary feet. Toward evening, they came upon a small shack in a forest clearing on the other side of the mountain. Let us wait, Hungbu and his wife said to each other. Perhaps the people who live here will return and give us shelter. The moon rose, casting its silver light on the trees and branches below. Through all the cold night and chilly dawn, they waited for the owners to return. But no one came. The house was empty. And so they settled there, ecking out a living as best they could from whatever Hungbu could grow on the dry, dusty soil of their garden. One day, as he walked through the forest, Hungbu heard a cheeping sound at his feet. Looking down, he saw a baby swallow lying on the ground. One of its wings was broken. Hungbu took the tiny bird home. He wrapped the wing carefully in soft cotton. His wife and children fed it on flower seeds and grain every day until the broken wing was healed, and soon after the swallow flew away. Autumn passed, then winter came. Oh, how hungry and cold they were, shivering inside the walls of their straw-covered shack. But spring did return at last. All over the mountainsides, the azaleas began to bloom, and water flowed again in the streams and rivers.
One day, as Hangul was taking was raking the garden, he heard a familiar cheeping sound. It was his friend the swallow flying overhead. Down she swooped and dropped three small white seeds into his hand. Goodbye, he called after her. Goodbye and thank you. Hongbu planted the seeds. He and his wife and children watered them carefully, protecting them from the weeds and insects. In a few weeks, the seeds took root. Soon they began to sprout and blossom. And then one day, three small gourds, bright and yellow, appeared on the vines. Hongbu waited patiently and when he saw that the gourds were ripe and ready, he and his wife and children went to the garden to harvest them. He reached out to pick the first gourd. Before you could touch it, it opened up all by itself, revealing inside not pumpkin flesh and seeds, but yards and yards of shimmering silk and handfuls of shining golden coins. Hangbu and his family stared in wonder. The second gourd opened, and out came bushels and sacks of rice, enough to feed the family for many winters to come. As the family gazed with wide eyes, the third gourd opened, and out came seven carpenters, who instantly set to work, hammering and sawing. Before Hongbu could say thank you, the carpenters had built a magnificent new house. Soft cushions adorned the rooms, and painted scrolls hung on the walls. Servants ready to care for the family's every need stepped out and beckoned them inside. And so, Hongbu and his family began a new life. Word of their good fortune spread soon from neighbor to neighbor until it reached all the villagers of the mountainside. When Nobu heard the news, he became very jealous. Where did my brother gain his great fortune? He muttered to himself. I'll just have to go and see about this. And he stomped off down the road. When he arrived at the new home, Nobu uh, did not utter a word of greeting to his brother. Where did you get all this wealth? He shouted gruffly. Did you have to go out and steal and make a living and bring dishonor to our family name? Hungbu, mindful of his father's memory, answered his brother with dignity and respect. No, my brother, I did not steal. Let me explain. And he told Nobu of the whole story of the swallow and her broken wing, how he had healed her, and how the swallow had repaid him with the gift of the magic seeds. Nobu did not stop to thank his brother. Instead, he stomped back down the road and went into the forest. I too can fix a silly bird wing. Why shouldn't I be the one to get the great wealth? Search though he might through the forest paths, he saw no baby birds of any kind on the ground. But when he got home, he looked up and chanced to see a swallow's nest on the eaves of his house. Nobu had an idea. Grumbling and complaining still, he set up a ladder, climbed to where he could reach the nest, and shook it. One baby bird fell to the ground. He climbed down, took a stick, and struck the swallow, breaking one of its wings. Then he picked it up, brought it inside, where he wrapped it carelessly in a rag, fed it a few drops of water, and left it on a pile of straw. Yet somehow, despite the poor care given it by Nobu, the swallow managed to heal, and one day it flew away, as the other one had. Autumn passed, and winter came. Nobu waited impatiently, pacing back and forth across the floor of his house. When will that stupid bird come back with my treasure? He would say to his wife and children. Finally, one spring day, Nobu heard a cheeping call. It was the swallow. Down she swooped, and he pranced around in the courtyard. The swallow dropped three white seeds into his greedy, outstretched palm. Then she flew away, singing a little song. Nobu took the seeds and threw them out onto the ground. He didn't water them. It, he didn't bother to keep away the weeds and insects. Yet somehow the seeds grew, until one morning three gourds, bright and yellow, appeared in the garden. Even before they were ripe, Noble rushed out to open them. And last, the richest of the gourds will be mine, he shouted with glee. He went to slice open the first gourd, but before he could touch it, the gourd opened by itself. Only this time, instead of gold and silk, out came piles of mud and manure. 
Noble had his nose, held his nose and stepped backwards. But just then, the second gourd opened, and to his horror, out came hordes of snakes, scorpions, and spiders, hissing and stinging as they crawled all over the garden. Nobu shrieked. His wife and children ran behind him. Before they could run back into the house, the third gourd opened, and out came an army of evil spirits and howling demons. As Noble watched in terror, they flew into the house and smashed it to bits. Not a stick of wood or thread of cloth was left behind. Then the demons disappeared, their piercing laughter fading into the wind. Nobu and his family were helpless. They had nowhere to live and nothing left to eat. Desperately, they made their way down the mountainside, begging for food, until finally they reached the house of his brother. Hongbu heard a knock on the door. He looked out the window and saw Nobu. Quick, he called to his wife. We must bring food for my brother and his family. Hongbu's wife ran into the kitchen to tell the servants what to prepare. Then Hongbu ran to open the door. My brother, he cried when he saw Nobu's face and the faces of his wife and children. What has happened? Nobu fell into his brother's arms, weeping. It is all because of my cruel ways that this misfortune has fallen on the family. Nobu told him about the gourds, and then and there, he begged Hungbu's forgiveness for all that he had done to him in the past. Hungbu embraced his brother and begged him to come inside with his wife and children. They sat together, eating dishes of steamed rice and roasted beef that the servants brought to them. A few days later, the two brothers went to visit their father's grave, bringing offerings of fruit, grains, and incense. To honor their, fa their father's memory, they promised to help each other always. They kept their word. Through all the changing seasons until the end of their days, Hongbu and Nobu, younger brother and older brother, lived together in peace and harmony in the house on the mountainside that the swallow's gift had brought. And so did their children and grandchildren and all their descendants to this very day. The end.